Hi everyone, uh, welcome to a very impromptu session, uh, repeat session of the session I had on Friday. This is speedrunning the cloud with the Azure SDK and the developer CLI. So in terms of what we'll cover in the session, we'll first have an introduction. We'll talk about some of the benefits of using the Azure SDK for Python specifically. Uh, I'll go over the basics of how to use the SDK. Then I'll run into a quick demo and then I can answer any questions that you might have. So let's start off with a quick introduction. So uh, what is the Azure SDK for Python? Uh, sorry, one second. All right. What is the Azure SDK for Python? The Azure SDK is a collection of Python libraries that are designed to provide an interface for developers to interact with Azure services. So you can think of it as idiomatic Python code for you to use when you're interacting with anything that's deployed on Azure. Now going into what the developer CLI is, the developer CLI is a developer-friendly CLI that greatly reduces the time you need to get started or getting your app on Azure. And we'll run into a demo of both of these in this session today. So, before we start, just a quick shout out to the Azure SDK for Python repo. We are open source. We have over 4.3K stars, and a lot of people are using our project. Pro project. And we have over 180 libraries. So that's plenty of libraries you can use for your services on Azure as well. So if you want to take a look, uh, we are on GitHub. So before we get started into jumping exactly into the code, we have two concepts when it comes to the Azure SDK for Python. We first have our management plane, or management libraries. And these are for creating, configuring, and otherwise managing your Azure resources. So think about maybe spinning up an, a, a, a database or a storage account, something like that. You'd use a management library for that. And you can tell you're using a management plane library because in our PyPI packages, they're prefixed by MGMT in the package name. Next, we have our client or data plane libraries. And these are uh, for you to interact with already provisioned Azure resources. So if you have a storage account that's already spun up, you can spin that up using a management plane library, and then you can interact with it using a data plane storage library if you want to, say, upload a blob or download something, things like that. So now that we know the basics of what the SDKs are, we can talk about some of the benefits and why you might be interested in using the Azure SDK for Python. So first, it's fast. So it greatly reduces the time for you to let write Azure-specific code, and that's kind of the goal of the SDK itself. We don't want you to spend a lot of time figuring out what the cloud is, how to interact with the service, what it looks like. We want to give you a library that you can use in Python to just start interacting with Azure services from the get-go. As a result, this reduces the time you need to onboard it to the capabilities of an Azure service, which is really nice. And it re reduces the need for you to write and maintain best practices for that code. The SDK follows all of those best practices out of the box. In addition, the operations you have are optimized for performance, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And then there's a robust exception system in the libraries themselves, which help you get more detail and debug your code with the cloud uh, quicker. So in terms of more nice things to have outside of the box, you get built-in open telemetry support for your tracing applications. There's a consistent design for the libraries cross-service and cross-language. So it doesn't matter what the REST API underneath looks like. Uh, as long as you understand one SDK, in theory, you understand all of them, and the same process applies. Uh, the libraries keep up to date with new service functionality. So uh, if you want to stay up to date with the latest changes for a service in Azure, the libraries are there to reflect those changes so you can get started as fast as possible. Uh, and like I said, you have a lot of things built out of the box, like consistent retries, exceptions, uh, HTTP client management, all of these things that can get a, a little bit frustrating when you're calling APIs directly. The libraries handle them all, all out of the box. In addition, we have the Azure Identity Libraries, which are great for handling authentication, which, again, is another big pain point, which will allow you to focus more on the code that matters and not just how it works on the cloud. Some extras and fun facts about the Azure SDK for Python. So we are built by Python developers, for Python developers, um, very involved community members all throughout our team. Uh, the data models in our library allow for IntelliSense in your IDE, and I'll show that in a little bit, which is great. It allows you to understand the libraries and services a lot faster and also get Debug, start debugging a lot faster as well. A uh, fun fact is we wrote our own AMQP messaging protocol in Python for our libraries. Um, we ha also have async operation support in the SDK itself. And members from the Azure SDK team, such as myself or a couple of our engineers here, have attended PyCon since 2014. So we've been around. And uh, we're excited to chat with you here today. So uh, some basic steps to using the SDK. So if you want to get started with a management library, use four major steps. The first step is to ensure you have the permissions to create and manage resources in Azure. Once you have those permissions, you want to verify your identity to make sure you are the person with those permissions. And you use the Azure Identity Library for that. Then you create a client object to interact with, the, with Azure itself. And then you can do something. 
And for data plane, it looks a lot similar. So instead of having the permission to create resources and manage resources in Azure, you want to make sure you have the permission to operate on those already created resources. So for example, you want to be a data writer, data reader, uh, maybe an owner if you have a little bit more administration, uh, so on. Once you have those permissions, again, authenticate with Azure Identity. You create your client cl object, and now you can do something. You don't have to worry about anything else, and this is all in Python. So in terms of uh, ensuring you have the right permissions, you can add yourself uh, via access control RBAC in the Azure portal. There's also the CLI, uh, which you can use to add, yourself, uh, add your permissions. Once you have that, then you can authenticate with the Azure Identity Library. Uh, most of our code samples will talk about the default Azure credential. This essentially is a bunch of uh, different credentials that gets tried in a row, and it kind of keeps going until it works. So for local development and getting started quickly, it's great because it'll try out a bunch of them and just take the one that automatically is, is there. So for example, in our demos, we have the seventh one down here, which is the Azure Developer CLI. So once you've logged in with at least one of them, it'll pick that, and that's your auth. Once you have that, depending on what your service looks like, you'll create a, a client object. Some services, like storage, have multiple clients. And that's really more reflective of the service itself and the operations you want to do on it. So for example, if you have a storage account, then you want to have a blob service client. If you want to have a container or a bucket, if you're familiar with other cloud terminologies, you can use a container client. And then for individual files or blobs, then you can have a blob client. And all of these objects have, or all of these classes have nice functionalities built in with them. So then you really have focused code for what you're actually writing. And lastly, you can do something. So for example, if you have a container client, you want to list all of the blobs in there. We have a code sample here where you can just run this function in Python, and you get an iterable object that you can run through. So now that we have the basics of the SDK under the way, I'll also explain the Azure Developer CLI basics. So first, uh, to get started, if you're curious on what you can do with the Azure Developer CLI and what kind of projects you can spin up, we have a page called Awesome AZD, which has templates written by Microsoft and also by the community. And these templates are good for you to find a project to get started with Azure as, as fast as possible. So let's assume that we found a project on Awesome AZD. What do we do next? First, we want to run AZD uh, init. So that will initiate the, or that will get all the code on your machine for the demo, uh, for the uh, template that you want to run. So in this screenshot, I did our uh, popular Azure Search OpenAI demo, which you can see at the booth to the right of me here. Um, but once you have that on your machine, then you do AZD auth login, and that ensures that you are, uh, your identity is confirmed. And once you have that, then the, the next step is to put it on the cloud, which is very easy. You'll see. You just run AZD up. And this command will ask you the specifics for deployment, so you can get your Azure locations, such as um, you know, US East 2 or something like that. And then it'll ask for a subscription. And once you have those two questions answered, then it knows enough to deploy and pr or provision and deploy all of the, uh, app the services and code that you want to get on Azure. And there's no extra work required beyond that. So you can just run that command and let it sit. Uh, and then once you're finished with that and you want to tear down your resources, you can just run AZD down. And for developers, this is great because you can get started as fast as possible without having to worry about clicking through the portal or setting any configurations. And also, it's great for billing because you have something where you can spin something up. You know it's there in the cloud. Once you've messed around with it, you, want, you like what you're seeing, you can tear it down and then make a plan on what, how you want to continue. Or it's great for prototyping, great for experimenting. It's just great for getting started as fast as possible without, again, having to focus on the cloud itself. You can just focus on the code you want to write. So now that we have an understanding of how the SDK and the uh, Azure Developer CLI work, I'll run into a quick demo. So I'll jump into VS Code here. And I have two examples of our uh, Azure SDK, first using the storage blob service, and then Cosmos DB. Um, so just running into the code here, um, we import all the libraries that we need. So we have the Azure Identity Library, and we have the Azure Storage Blob Library. And again, since they're separate packages with their own data models, you get all this nice IntelliSense out of the box. You get all of the nice details and doc strings and whatnot. And um, yeah, it's great. And IntelliSense as well. So first, we start by creating our Azure Developer CLI credential. Um, once you have that, so actually, let me run that. Uh, AD auth login. This actually might take a second. Oh, no, we're good. Never mind. I thought I had to verify on my phone, but we're good. Uh, OK, so we have our credential, and we're logged in, uh, as you can see in the terminal here. Then I have an environment variable for our storage account. This isn't something that necessarily needs to be private. I just, for the demo's sake, it's cleaner to have it in my environment variables. 
And first, we can create the blob service client. So to interact with the service itself, you create the client object. And again, data model, really nice. You have all of the uh, details you want in native Python. So we pass in our uh, account URL, and then we pass in our credential. And once we, have our, once we have our client object, we can continue to do things. So then we get the container client, which is one step down. So now that we have a service, that we, uh, a blob service that we're talking to, now we can talk to an individual bucket so, or container. So I have this container named PyCon 2024, and I want to run a create container function here. And then I pass in the name uh, PyCon 2024. And the great thing about this, again, that you can have type hinting, so I can have container client. And then if I want to do anything, now my IDE knows that uh, it has all the methods available to me. And that just makes things very easy when I'm trying to discover uh, what to do. So now that we have our container client, then we want to upload a file. So I created a file called comment.txt. Very simple, just something I can throw up in the cloud. And from there, we will um, create a blob client fr from the container client that we have. We pass in the container name that we want um, to get the blob client from. And then we pass in the blob, which is our, our file name. And then the code will upload. And then just to test the uh, download functionality as well, uh, I have a, a code here to download it immediately after we upload it, and then just append uh, download.txt to it. So then if I run this code, we should log into, or we should um, get everything uploaded to the cloud with this file and then download it immediately. And it's very simple, but you can see that when you're interacting with Azure, it's just, no, there's no actual, under, there's no more learning you need to do. You have an, a client object and you can discover what to do from interacting with Python code and really focus on business logic instead of having to focus on what, you, what Azure does or what this library uh, requires you to do. It's pretty straightforward. And again, very limited amount of code to get your job done. I have an example here for Cosmos as well, which is very, going to look very similar. Again, our libraries are designed consistently. So there shouldn't be too much cross-learning besides the service itself, like what the service can do. So we import the Cosmos client from our Cosmos library. And here, you can also use uh, Key Vault for secrets management. So we have a secrets client here. And then we have our Azure Identity Library for our authentication. It's going to look very similar to the last one. So we have our credential. We get from our environment variables. We get the Key Vault URL. And from there, we create a new Key Vault secret client. And this will be used to handle all of our secrets for our Cosmos database. You can use, um, yeah, so using the Key Vault client, we get the endpoint of our Cosmos database. We then get the key for it. And we use the dot value. Uh, we use dot value here to get the secrets value as a string. Once we have that, and we have our database name and our container name, which I've just called PyCon DB and container one, we can then create the Cosmos client to actually interact with Cosmos itself. So then we pass in the string value of our endpoint, the string value of our uh, credential, and we set the consistency level to a, just a session. And then we get the database client, get the container client, and then from there we can start querying the items in the database. So again, this is a lot of native Python code. It looks great. It works very nicely. From here, we can get an uh, iterable. So we can just iterate over the items. And then I have the value uh, field in there. And I just print that out. So if I run this, it will interact with the cloud very quickly, very easily in, in native Python code. So I don't have to worry about anything else. And there we go. So you can see I I've also the query ordered by uh, time, uh, timestamp uh, ascending. So you can see the order of the items that I created. So I created hello there from PyCon US 2024 as my items in my database. Obviously, these are very, very simple examples. But you can see that it doesn't take a whole lot to get started. And this is, again, native Python code, which is open source. And we try to make it as enjoyable as possible for Python developers to work with Azure and also not have to focus on the, the, the nitty gritty details and just focus on what helps their project or their business as much as possible. So now, now that we have a demo of uh, the Azure SDK, I'll jump over to a demo of um, AZD. And actually, before, <laughs> right before I started this presentation, I started, um, I already uh, did the AZD init and AZD off. And I just ran AZD provision and AZD deploy. So provision creates the resources in uh, Azure. Deploy actually puts your application on those, uh, on, the, on those resources that you spun up. And if you run AZD up, it actually combines those two commands together. So I ran those separately. But and you can also customize the uh, commands yourself. So for example, uh, going into our azure.yaml file, you can see that the command up actually runs AZD provision and then uh, AZD deploy dash dash all. So 
This app that I have here is actually from our awesome AZD templates. It's just a React web app with, uh, the, that uses the Python API and Mongo on Azure. So it's a very templates or bare bones template to get started on Azure. And again, the, the goal of the Azure Developer CLI is to let you not worry about any of the underlying resources or having to click through the portal. You can just find a template you want to use, uh, get it on your machine, run AZD auth login, and then AZD auth. And it'll be launched and provisioned as, uh, in no time. So I, it, it, it deployed the service API, so I can go click this link. And then this will be the uh, swagger for the API that got, was uh, defined. And then it also has the service. So I can go here, and this will be the web app that I can actually talk to and create items with um, in this, in this uh, to-do example. And again, you can find all of the templates that you can work with in the uh, awesome AZD template library. So this was a very basic one. Uh, some of our most popular Python ones, you can select Python here and look through. A lot of AI stuff, as you'd imagine. But also, we have a lot of things like Flask and FastAPI. Um, so for example, uh, Flask here, uh, FastAPI. Oh, I can just select that. Easy. Yeah, so there's lots of, lots of templates to look through. And again, this is just a really easy way to get from a template project to the cloud as fast as possible. From there, you can just write the code however you want. Whenever you're ready to actually put it on the cloud, again, AZD auth login, AZD up. It'll be up there following this template really easily. So from here, we can really call this a speed run of the cloud because we get all of our resources provisioned and uh, our application deployed super quickly. And we also have native Python code that can talk to the services if you want to make it a little bit more complex. So thanks for tuning in. And um, just our closing, one second. You can learn more about the Python SDK and AZD at ak.ms slash azsdk slash Python. Uh, for the Azure Developer CLI, that's ak.ms slash azd. You can check us out on GitHub at github.com slash Azure slash Azure SDK for Python. Uh, we have an account on X, formerly Twitter, at Azure SDK. And then if you have any questions for uh, putting your Python apps on Azure, we do check Stack Overflow. So you can put the tags Azure plus Python. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much.